eat, then go. Huh? <laughs> So this is in continuation of our previous lecture, we are we wanted to discuss the various properties of the continuous functions and in a consequence of that we see that if function is continuous over a closed bounded intervals then uh, we have some results which is known as the boundedness theorem, maximum minimum theorem and the Bolzano's theorem and this gives you the also a criteria to find out an approximate solution for the root of the function that is root location with the help of this. Okay. So, let us see first what is the bounded uh, before going for the boundedness theorem I will revise recall the definition of a bounded function bounded bounded function we define like this a function f a function f from a set a to r where a is a non subset of r non empty subset of r is said to be is said to be bounded on a on a if there exists if there exists a constant m greater than 0 such that the mod of f x is less than or equal to m for all x belongs to m. It means a function is said to be bounded if the corresponding range set is a bounded set. So, when we say that f is not bounded it means that is uh, so, a function f from a to r <coughs> is not bounded, it means we are unable to get such an m for which this inequality holds or we can say that if given any m then, then a is, uh, function f is said to be unbounded then if any if given any m given any m greater than 0 there exist there exist a point x which depends on this bound m x m uh, point m belongs to a such that the value of the function at these points will be greater than the desired uh, the given number m. So, whatever the number you choose you can always find a corresponding a point in a for which the function of value will exceed the y that number m. Then we say f is unbounded or not bounded on the set m. Okay. So, this is we have already discussed we wanted now the result the theorem which is known as the boundedness theorem. The theorem states says let i be a closed bounded interval be a closed bounded interval bounded interval and and let f be a function from this closed bounded interval to r be a continuous function be continuous on i then this theorem says f is bounded on i so every continuous function on a closed bounded interval will be a bounded function that's what he says uh, proof uh, we will prove by contradiction suppose f is not bounded on i suppose f is not bounded on i so by definition uh, we cannot find an m 
such that the mod of fx is less than or equal to m. So we can get then for any n belongs to natural number, their age, their age a number xn in the set A such that the value of the function absolute value of this functional value f of x n will exceed y n. So, corresponding to 1 we get 1 point x 1 in a so that f x 1 is greater than 1 2 we get f x 2 such. So, we get a sequence of the points in a which will satisfy this condition f of x n is greater than n. Okay. But since i is bounded since i which is giving to be the bound close bounded interval is a bounded set and all these sequences x n which you are getting satisfying the condition say 1 satisfying 1 lies in a in i lies in i because these are all the sequences belonging to i and i is a bounded uh, bounded uh, set so the sequence xn is a bounded sequence because xn lies between a and b so that uh, all the terms of the sequence have a lower bound say a upper bound say b it is a bounded sequence and we know by bolzano lestat's theorem uh, every bounded sequence has a convergent sequence so use the bolzano lestat's theorem uh, the bolzano lestat's theorem so use bolzano lestat's theorem this will give which gives a convergent so which gives a convergent subsequence x n k of say x n k of this x n of this x n convergence of sequence of x n of x n that converges to the point x converges to a number x to a number say x because by definition x n is a bounded sequence. So, Bolzano Restas theorem says by Bolzano Restas theorem uh, we can get a subsequence which is convergent and converges to a number x. Now, this x obviously belongs to i. Why? S because since x is x n k all these terms of the sequence x n k lies between a and b. This is a closed interval i is closed interval all the terms of the sequence lies between this. So, the limit of this sequence x n cannot exceed between this will always lie between these two bond. So, since this is there uh, where i is a closed bounded interval. So, the limit point of this sequence x n k over k this limit point uh, obviously belongs to i obviously belongs to i. Okay. But this limit point is x. So, this shows that x belongs to i you know. So, what we get is that a sequence x n k has a subsequence which is convergent and the limit point belongs to i. Now, f is given to be continuous since f is given a continuous function over the interval i and x is one of the point inside the i. So, this implies f is continuous at x. So, by Hannibal's theorem therefore, this implies limit of x and k when k tends to infinity is x will give you will give will give f of x and k limit of this as k tends to infinity is nothing but what f of x f of x okay because by the convergence part. So, what is so this implies the sequence f x and 
एफ एक्स एफ एक्स एन के दिस सीक्वेंस इज ए कन्वर्जेंट सीक्वेंस इज ए कन्वर्जेंट सीक्वेंस ओके एंड कन्वर्जेंट सीक्वेंस इज ऑलवेज बाउंडेड सो इट इज बाउंडेड इट इज बाउंडेड बट दैट गिव्स ए कंट्राडिक्शन टू अवर रिजल्ट बिकॉज दिस सीक्वेंस एफ ऑफ एक्स एन इज ग्रेटर देन एन सो फ्रॉम हियर फ्रॉम वन बट from 1 what we get we get mod of fx and k is greater than greater than n of k which is greater than k of course greater than k and this is to for all k belongs to n for all k belongs to n so this continuous function uh, is not uh, uh, bounded on the closed bounded interval so this shows that function f this over this sequence so uh, supposition that function is not bounded gives a contradiction so this gives a contradiction of our second part but from we get this which contradicts two because here this so this is unbounded while we have already shown it is bounded so it gives a contradiction and contradiction is because of our assumption that the our function f is not bounded on i so this shows that function f is bounded on i this implies f is bounded on i that is closed interval so this proves the result which is known as the boundedness theorem now in the boundedness theorem we have assumed these conditions what are the condition in the boundedness theorem is first condition is the interval on which the function is defined must be closed and bounded so this is one of the condition which we have uh, taken second condition which we have seen the function must be a continuous function on this so interval is uh, closed bounded and function is continuous then only we can say f is a bounded function on this if any one of the condition is relaxed that is if we take i to be a simply bounded interval not closed or simply closed not bounded or function is not continuous then our conclusion that f is bounded on i will not cannot be drawn in fact we will get a contradiction we will get the example we will be get this function is unbounded when we relax any one of the condition so let's see the examples uh, uh, the condition not the conditions the conditions of the hypoth uh, of bold, uh, bounded nest theorem the hypothesis of bounded nest theorem is uh, each conditions each condition of i know is needed is needed to justify or to get the function f to get a continuous function to be bounded to be bounded on if we relax any one of the condition uh, then we get <coughs> the conclusion fails the conclusion conclusion of the theorem fails if if any one of the hypothesis or any one if any one of the conditions of boundedness theorem is relaxed is relaxed for example suppose i take the function say function fx is suppose x the interval i i am choosing i as an interval is 0 to infinity okay and now this function is continuous function 
it is a continuous function on this interval i but i is i is not uh, that is the function uh, is closed but unknown is not bounded it is unbounded one though it is closed though it is closed because all the limits point of between 0 1 are inside it so i is a closed interval but it's not bounded okay then what happens the function is continuous throughout but the bound for this function but function fx equal to x is an unbounded function because as x increases the value of the fx keeps on increasing and interval is up to infinity so it is without bound so it is unbounded therefore the conclusion fail second if suppose i take the same uh, function gx as a 1 by x this function and the interval i choose i to be the interval say 0 1 now this interval is not closed but bounded function fx is continuous over the interval 0 1 because 0 is not included but we have seen this function is also unbounded is unbounded as because as x tends to 0 the function gx will go to infinity unbounded then so again the relaxing the condition is again not going to help uh, that conclusion fails then if i take the interval i as a closed interval which is a closed and bounded okay but now i am taking the function h x h 1 by x if x belongs to the interval say 0 1 and g, uh, 1 if x is 0 i define this function the function is continuous over the 0 1 interval okay but it is discontinuous at the point 0 clearly h is discontinuous at x equal to 0 so again the conditions is not satisfied and obviously clearly h is unbounded h is when x approaches to 0 the uh, this is uh, not a bounded function ok 1 by x for this 0 1 and 0 when it is discontinuous and unbounded on c ok. So, this will be uh, <coughs> there ok. So, we can see that in boundedness theorem is can only be applicable when all the three conditions are taken in consideration next result which we want to maximum minimum theorem the maximum minimum theorem minimum theorem <coughs> the theorem says let i be a closed bounded interval be a closed bounded interval closed bounded interval and let f which is mapping from i to r v continuous v continuous on i we continuous on i then then f has an f has an absolute maxima absolute maxima maximum and an absolute absolute minimum minimum on i this results 
Now we have already discussed the maximum absolute maximum and absolute minimum uh, in the last lecture. So proof we go. What is the absolute maximum we mean? That if suppose a function is from A to R, then f has a max absolute maximum at a point if there exists some point x star such that f x star is greater than f x for all x and minimum when f x lower star is less than or equal to f x. So, that is the <coughs> way we have introduced the maximum <coughs> of this function. Uh, we will discuss uh, after this proof. So, suppose uh, what we want is suppose a be a closed bounded interval and function is given to be continuous then it will attain its maximum value as well as minimum value over the interval i that is there exists some point where the absolute maximum will be the attained absolute minimum will be attained. So, let us see the problem. So, consider the set f of i the set of those values f x where x belongs to i means consider the range set of function f which is defined over i. Now, this range set the values of f right, is clearly is bounded is bounded subset of r and this follows it follows from the previous from boundedness theorem because boundedness theorem we have seen if the i is a closed bounded interval f is a continuous function then f of i then f is a bounded on i that is the range set will be a bounded set on i. So, it is a bounded subsets of r this this much we can. So, once it is bounded subset we can talk about the upper bound and lower bound and supremum of, of least upper bound and greatest lower bound. So, let us suppose s star be the uh, upper bound supremum value of the function f i and s lower star be the infimum value of the function f i that is least upper bound of the function f uh, over the interval is suppose s star and this. Now, what we want to have this s star and small s star exist it means there exists some function what we wanted to prove required to prove is that there exist there exist points x upper star and x lower star uh, in i such that the s star will coincide with the f of x star and s lower star will coincide with f of x lower star this we wanted to show. So, first we will prove for the this side and the other will follow in a similar way. Okay. So, let us assume. Uh, so, first to show that there exist that there exist an x star in i such that s star which is the supremum value of f i exist and equal to the value at this point there exist this we wanted to show. Okay. Now, since our x star now since s star is the least upper bound of the function f i of the function f x for x belongs to i when x belongs to the least upper bound of this function is s star. So, if I choose a number slightly lower than this it cannot behave as a least upper bound. So, the number then so the number s star minus 1 by n this number is a slightly lower than so is not an upper bound for it so is not an upper bound upper bound uh, is not an upper bound for uh, the set a or of the set f i is not a therefore there exist so, we can say consequently 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 there exist there exist a number x n in i 
such that x star upper minus 1 by n is less than s star sorry this is s star s star minus 1 by n less than f of x n which is less than all equal to s star s upper star for all n belongs to capital n. because this is our upper bound so when you take a number slightly lower than this then we can find a some number x n in i so that the functional value of x n will exceed by this number and obviously it will remain less than equal to this because it is the least upper bound for this okay now this sequence number x n but this sequence is x n satisfying one one are lying in the interval i which is say a b which is a closed and bounded interval closed and bounded so by bolzano lester's theorem so by bolzano lester's theorem by bolzano lester's theorem there is a subsequence there is a subsequence uh, say x days elements are x and say r belonging to of x of course of x x is a sequence x n of x that converges that converges to some number x upper star say say okay now we want uh, in fact this number which we have got it best must be a point of a b this we want to show first so how to show is since all the all the elements of this are again the elements of i so since the since the elements of x this that is x and r these are the they belongs to belongs to i which is closed and bounded interval bounded interval so just like a previous thing we can say so just like previous theorem previous theorem we have seen that if the sequence of the point belongs to a closed and bounded open interval then limit point will also belongs to it and since it is closed so limit point will. so it follows from this that the limit point that the limit point x star is also a point in i okay therefore f is continuous at i therefore f is continuous at this point also because it is continuous throughout over the i so once it is continuous so apply the definition hany vanry definition hany theorem says if a sequence converges to x star then f of xn will also converge xr will also converge to fx star so by theorem limit of fx and r when r tends to infinity coincide with f of x star because it is continuity but by the first one use the first one from first what we get is s star minus n r is less than f of x n r which is less than or equal to s star is it not so this true for all r belongs to n now let r tends to infinity so this limit is s star this is s star so by skew's theorem skew's theorem the limit of this function fx and r as r tends to infinity will be equal to s star but this limit is nothing but what fx star so what we so this implies there exists an x star belonging to i such that such that the supremum because this is the supremum value of the function fi such that this fx star is the supremum of f of i 
exist and that proves the existence of is similarly we can show we can show for that there exist a x lower star in i such that x x lower star is the infimum of f of i and this completes the proof for this okay so this is uh, another results which you <coughs> now next result is also interesting that shows the location of the roots location of roots in fact uh, this also known as the bisection method bisection method it will be used in the bisection method for this known as that this algorithm is known as the bisection method so we are not uh, touching the okay location what this result says is let a let i be a closed and bounded interval be a closed and bounded interval of r of r and let f is a mapping from i to r be continuous on i be continuous on i now if at the point a is suppose negative at the point b it is positive or if at the point of a it is positive and at the point of b it is negative that is at the corner point if the function attains the different sign then there exist there exist there exist a number c there exist a number c belongs to the interval a b a b such that the value of the function at the point c will be zero so this shows that we can identify the root of the function if a function is defined over a closed interval a b which has a alternate sign that is at the point a is negative at the point b is negative so there will be a some point c we are and function is continuous so obviously when the function is continuous there is a continuous graph so when the function is negative it means the part of the graph is below the x axis and part of the graph is above the x axis so obviously because of the continuity of the curve the curve definitely cross the x axis so that point where it crosses will be the point c where f of c will be zero and that's the so is the locus now proof of this is uh, uh, in fact we will generate the sequence of successive bisection just like p so let us suppose i1 is an interval say a1 b1 okay and assume let us first assume that f of a is negative and f of b is positive okay now i1 is the interval we are a1 is suppose a and b1 is suppose b okay and let p1 is the middle point of a1 plus b1 by 2 now if our f of p1 is zero then result follows is it not suppose it is not suppose f of p1 is not equal to zero then either either f of p1 will be negative or f of p2 p1 will be positive if f of p1 is negative if f of p1 is negative negative then in that case we take the a2 a2 as our p1 b2 as our b1 and in case if this is positive then then take the a2 as our a1 while the b2 is our p1 okay and collect the and consider the interval a2 b2 consider the interval a2 b2 like this okay this is fine and then once one of the 
uh, case you will be open so one of the interval a to b2 you would say then find the point p2 which is again the interval half of this that is basically a2 plus b2 by 2 so basically this length when you are taking this uh, uh, a2 by 2 then test the functional value as f2 if it is 0 then result follows if not then again either f of uh, p2 will be positive or f of p2 will be negative so again continue the same process as above okay so suppose we are getting after at the nth stage what we get so suppose we get uh, the sequence of nested nested closed intervals a n b n with length such that such that for every n belongs to capital n we have the value of f of n is negative and value of the function at the point b n is positive so this is the sequence of nested intervals say a 1 b 1 then maybe once you divide here is a 2 b 2 like this further divide and like this so we get this nested sequence of the nested intervals we are getting or maybe sometimes here or there that also possibility may be like this also that instead of this we get this or maybe this and so on like this so uh, we get a sequence of the nested intervals which covers the which is contained totally in, uh, in the previous one and length of this with the length will be b n minus a n b n minus a n uh, a n and that is equal to b minus a over 2 to the power n minus 1 this will be the length of the interval a n b n length of i i n which is a n b n interval this one okay now let us see here we get here we get the sequence n n which is less than equal to uh, okay uh, n which is less than equal to b n uh, nested interval okay so what we get it here is uh, so here we get a sequence of the nested interval a n b n say i n such that such that i1 covers i2 covers i3 i3 and so on and the finite intersection of i n when n is equal to 1 to r is non empty okay so there will be so by by the result which we have nested interval property interval property by nested interval property there exist a point c there exist a point c that belongs to i n belonging to i n i n for all n this is nested pro interval property ok so since for all i n ok now since c lies between uh, c lies between a n and b n for all n belongs to n for all n belongs to n we have that 0 less than equal to c minus a n which is less than equal to b my b n minus a n which is equal to b minus a over 2 n minus 1 and uh, 0 less than equal to 
bn minus c which is less than equal to bn minus an and which is equal to b minus a over 2n minus 1 this is true so when n tends to infinity the this is tending to 0 this is tending to 0 so this so the limit of a n is c limit of b n is c so this implies that as n tends to infinity limit of a n is c which is the same as the limit of b n okay but f is given to be continuous what f is f is continuous so continuous at this point continuous on i so continuous at c also which is in i therefore therefore limit of the sequence f of a n as n tends to infinity is nothing but the value of the function at the point c which is limit of f of b n so this shows okay now further f of a n is always be negative for each n and f of b n will always be positive for each n so therefore the limit of this sequence f a n which is equal to f c will be less than or equal to 0 and from here the limit of f b n when n tends to infinity which is also f c will be greater than or equal to 0 so when you take these two together we get f of c is equal to 0 and that proves the root this shows c is the root of f that is there exists a c where the function will be 0 so if alternate positive negative then we can get this thing so that is very interesting it is basically used by a numerical method in, uh, in numerical to get the approximate root for the function f x equal to 0. Next result which we have the Bolzano Bolzano intermediate intermediate theorem Bolzano intermediate theorem what this theorem says let i be let i <coughs> be an interval I v an interval and let f which is a mapping from i to r is a continuous function be continuous on i f be a continuous on i. Now, if a and b if a b belongs to i and if k is any real number satisfying the condition satisfying or satisfies the f of a is less than k which is less than f of b means in between f and a b we are choosing a real number k then there exists a point exist a point c in i between a and b a and b such that the value of the function at the point c is k this is known as the intermediate form means if f is a continuous function then it will attain all its values all its values in between the maximum and minimum value so in fact here we are not getting here we are not uh, discussing about the maximum minima. what we are saying we are taking two particular values of the function f a and b f b and they are distinct so if we picked up any number in between f a and f b and f is continuous so there will be a some point c available where this number will be attained by the function at some point so that is known as the intermediate term so proof of this is like there suppose that a is less than b suppose a is less than b let us take this one first okay and let g is defined as g x is choosing edge f x minus k so if we look this function then clearly at the point a g a is f a minus k f a minus k is negative and g of b is positive so this function 
g is is a value negative at the point a positive at the point b g is continuous function because f is continuous k is constant so addition or subtraction of three continuous function is continuous so g is continuous over the interval a b therefore by the intermediate theorem by the location of the root which we have proved earlier there will be a some point in between a b where the derivative where the functional g will be zero so by previous theorem that is location of roots location of roots uh, there exist there exist a point there exist a point c such that with c lying between a and b such that the value of this g c is 0, but what is g c? But g c is nothing but the f c minus k is 0. So, this implies f of c is equal to k. So, there will be a point c available in i where the function will be attained and the k will value is attained by the function at this point. Similarly, if we take suppose a is greater than b, second if a is greater than b, then what happens? You consider the function h x instead of this uh, we say k minus f x okay so that h of b will be negative and h of a will be positive so again there exists a point again say c lying between b and a such that the value of h will be zero at this point that is k minus f c so this implies f c is equal to k and that's proves that now we can extend this result and uh, because this is for any value lying between the two uh, unequal values of f so if we replace this f and capital f a and capital f a and f b by its minimum value or the maximum value that is infimum of this and, uh, and then supremum of this if we choose a k in between infimum and supremum then also we can get the some point value so as a corollary to this we can say let i be a closed bounded interval closed bounded interval and let f is a mapping from i to r i to r be continuous on i continuous on i now if k is in r any number is any number satisfying satisfying the infimum of f of i that is infimum of f of i is less than or equal to k which is less than or equal to supremum of f of i that is the min in minimum value and maximum value so k lies between minimum and maximum value then they are exist there exist a number c in i such that the value of the function at the point c will be k means this k will be attained by the function at some point okay proof follows just from the uh, maximum minimum theorem and our uh, this previous bolzano intermediate theorem so it follows from use maximum minimum theorem and location theorem of location of roots theorem. So, what we see here there exists a point C star that is so there exists a point say C star C upper star and C lower star okay, in I such that the infimum of this will be f of c lower star infimum will attain because i is a close and bound interval f is continuous function so infimum will be attained and there exists a point c lower star where the f c lower star is the infimum value and then 
this is less than equal to k which is less than equal to f of c star which is the same as the supremum of f of i. Now, conclusion follows from the Bolzano region. So, from Bolzano intermediate theorem we have we get a point c belongs to i such that the value of the function at the point c is k follows and this proves the result which is now we get one more results which is also uh, 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 true in case of the continuous function the transfer of a interval if f is a continuous function then it will transform the closed set closed interval to the closed interval but if interval is not closed then the image of the interval uh, other than the closed interval that is open interval or semi closed interval need not remain to open or semi closed that is the nature of the op closed interval is only retained by a continuous function but if the interval is not open and closed then its nature may change depending on the function so we get this result first for this uh, yeah uh, first of all let i be a closed interval i be a closed bounded interval closed bounded interval and let f is a mapping from i to r be continuous on i be continuous on i then the set f i which is the set of f x such that x belongs to i is a closed is a closed bounded bounded interval bounded interval. So, proof is <laughs> just like let suppose m is the infimum value of f i and capital M be the supremum value of f i. Suppose this m. Okay. Then we know that from maximum minimum theorem the m m belongs to m n. Now, by maximum minimum theorem this m and capital M belongs to i because they exist and there will be a point where it belongs to i. Okay. So, therefore, the every value of f i moreover moreover the functional value will lie between the interval m and m because its maximum value and minimum value only it will be there. So, we can get the maximum value and minimum value all the values lie in between this. Okay. So, if k is any point conversely if k is any point belonging to this interval then uh, it for then there exist a point c k is any value in between m and capital m then there exist a point c in i such that the value of the function at the c is coinciding with k it means k is an element of f of i. So, we conclude that any value in between f m is also contained in this. Therefore, we can say uh, m capital M this close interval is contained in f of i. So, combine these two we get f of i is nothing but m capital M is a closed bounded interval that is image of the closed bounded interval under the continuous function is closed and bounded. Okay. Uh, Let us see the uh, note the image of if f is continuous and i is an open interval then image of f i need not be open. For example, if we take the say uh, function f x is 1 over x square plus 1 and i is minus 1 to 1 then f of i you can see just half 1 this is not open closed at one point not open 
okay similarly if we get if f is uh, say uh, open semi closed interval then also suppose i2 is our interval uh, say 0 infinity a semi closed interval semi closed interval and f of x is the same as x square plus 1 we see f of i2 that f of i2 comes out to be a close semi closed interval but open at this point so what we say i2 is which is not closed not a closed interval okay so if it is not then we can so this shows that similarly third if you take fx is equal to sin x and if you choose the interval say minus pi 2 pi then image of this interval a phi will be the closed interval minus 1 to 1 so this shows that only the closed intervals under the continuous function retain remains closed image otherwise if the interval is not closed the image of that interval and the continuous function need not be the same nature thank you very much